What's up guys and welcome back to the Realistic Crew Mode of Rex and this is episode number 57 and as we run through the transfers already uh, happening in our fourth season in charge of Rex and you can see we brought in uh, Yuri Regier from FC20. This was Ian's suggestion back last season actually. Um, he's looking like a fantastic prospect and one that we actually brought in on a pretty decent deal, 3.9 million for the uh, 22 year olds. I think he could be our right back for years to come. We also brought in the ex-Liverpool um, potential star Jarrell Quanta re re uh, released by Liverpool. We've picked him up. Only 69 rated, but I think he'll definitely grow. A few of the youngsters went out on loan to league sides. We did sell Will Fish controversially. Um, actually accepted the initial bid from Royal Antwerp. I was meant to negotiate, but accidentally clicked um, accept on their initial bid. And then we brought in Cooley Woodrow as well to act as backup uh, for Paul Mullen. Now, I wasn't actually planning on selling Will Fish. He wasn't on the transfer market, but the offer came in and we'd brought in Quonsa. And I just thought, you know what? I wasn't convinced by Fish at all last season, despite him being our highest rated centre back. I think we need wholesale changes at the back. So we did accept the bid and he has moved to Belgium. And then you listen there as well. Um, Will Smallbone, we signed him on a pre-contract. Released from Southampton this summer, he comes in to bolster our midfield. As we head into game one of the season, Blackburn Rovers at home. Now, um, I didn't actually uh, look at it here, and but I just wanted to make a note because I think I looked, um, I looked at this player last episode before I even signed anyone. But Shea Adams was on the free agency market and I did contemplate bringing him in. But I thought for realism's sake, he isn't going to want to come in and be a second choice striker all season. That's why I went with Cordy Woodrow. Yes, he's like, he's seven ratings worse than Shea, Ad Shea Adams. But he, will be ha he wouldn't mind being a backup uh, striker for the season. So as much as I would have liked to bring Shea into the team, I just didn't see it happening realistically with Paul being our number nine starting up front well heading into the first game of the season would be Blackburn Rovers the last time we faced Rovers uh, we drew 3-3 with them it was a hectic game Alex Lowry scoring a hat trick in that one feels like a real changing of the tide here at Wrexham in our fourth season we've changed the captain Paul Mullen is now the skipper he was the skipper for most of last season with Hayden uh, the club captain being uh, on the bench most of the time but Mullen is now officially the club captain um, we've dropped the likes of uh, uh, Elliot Lee and Jacob Mendy, who have been starters from season one. Uh, two debutants, debutants coming in, Jarrell Quantra and Yuri Regier. I just feel like there's sort of a new generation, a younger uh, team coming through now. Luke Chambers is going to be our starting left back, as decided by you guys over the last few episodes. And we would kick off our season four campaign uh, with a great goal from Rocco Vata, this guy only scores great goals, I swear. Um, nice little through ball from Paul Mullen and Vata, the winger, who I think is going to be key for us this season. He uh, brings it down with one touch and then blasts it home to send the home fans into delirium. But they would be left shocked and our defensive issues highlighted inside the first half of the first game once again. Yes, we brought in Kwanzaa. Yes, we brought in Regier, but we still need to improve at the back and... Yeah, maybe in goal is where we need to bring in a player as well. I, I thought Wes Fotheringham would have one more season in him, but, you know, even off that first initial mistake, it's such a poor one. You know, I've, I've held wide to bring him out and he basically just presents an open goal to Mark Ande, who also scored a hat-trick in that 3-3 draw last season. So we would go into the break tied at 1-1. Alex Lowry would rob uh, the Blackburn defence and would bear uh, down on goal and would bag his fourth goal in the last two games against Blackburn. A real thorn in Rovers' side. But the lead wouldn't last long again and Sigurdsson would grab Blackburn's goal. Once again, I'm holding wide to bring out Fodderingham and he just sort of presents. and He doesn't really drive towards the player. He just runs into a, a, an open space. So, yeah, I feel like Fodderingham has kind of cost us a couple of goals here as Will Smallbone comes on for his debut for the side. It's very frustrating as well because just before that second goal, Jarrell Quanta put in a fantastic block um, it was really great to see him getting involved early doors. Now Will Fish has gone. Kwanzaa will be uh, one of our main centre-backs. And yes, his rating is lower, but I think his ceiling is much higher. Well, Kwanzaa would get turned here and Ennis would give Blackburn their first lead of the day. And it looks like it's going to be another thriller against Rovers. They now lead 3-2. But Smallbone involved um, heavily after coming off the bench. It links up with uh, Bennett and another substitute, Mendy before finding Paul Mullen, but his shot is blocked. 
and can we get something from a corner we were so dangerous from corners um not just last season but since this career mode has started alfie divine swinging in paul mullin rising and the captain the club captain now grabs his first goal of the season as he looks to retain his championship golden boots and make it four years on the run well in injury time with practically the last kick of the game heartbreaking stuff will smallbone with a beautiful through ball alfie divine was there and divine after grabbing an assist on the mullen equalizer should have had the game winner and then from the resulting corner vata's header goes over and the referee blows full time gutted that we couldn't grab that last second winner from divine it would have been a perfect way to end this game but it it ends 3-3 her back-to-back three all draws with blackburn much like last season, open, expansive attacking play going forward, but vulnerability showing again at the back. We want, if we want to be near promotion, we we can't play like that every week because we're gonna be sh like we can't ship goals like that, and that's something that I've wanted to identify this season. And you know, we brought in Quanta, we brought in Regier, but I still think we need to bring in another centre back and potentially a goalkeeper. You know, I I thought we could deal with Fodderingham for one more season. That might not be the case, so. Yeah, I'm going to be keeping my eye out for any goalkeepers that are on the market and potential centre-backs. As we head into the second game of the episode, we're on the road down to the south coast, heading to St Mary's where we face Southampton, uh, 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 who drew 2-2 in their opening game as well. So both teams looking for their first victories of the season. Southampton, of course, promoted in real life back to the Premier League. And uh, yeah, it will be an exciting season for the Saints back in the top five. Well, Delap, the former uh, Man City striker, would uh, pick up a, a weird injury here. I think it might have been Alfie Devine that uh, dove in on the Southampton striker. I'm not too sure. He heads it down. Yeah, it was a bit of a weird one. A late tackle from Devine, but uh, Delap seems to be injured. And he comes off and uh, Alcaraz, Carlos Alcaraz, who scored against us last season, scored a great uh, goal after a jink and run, comes on. And he would be the thorn in our side again. Just a couple minutes after being subbed on, he grabs the opener. Great run down the left and a uh, whipped ball in. Alcaraz with a header. Foddering no chance with that one. Bullet header and Alcaraz grabs the opening goal for the home fans. Well, with uh, 35 minutes on the clock, Lou Chambers plays a, uh, a short free kick before working it out wide to Vato, who finds himself on the left. He whips in a ball which Paul Mullen just about misses. But Yuri Regier picks it up. Nice feet from the new boy. He whips in a ball. And there's Paul Mullen. Two goals in two. Two headers in two. And a first assist in Wrexham colours for Yuri Regier. Great feet from the uh, right back. Weak footed in swinging cross. And Paul Mullen gets on the end of it. And we have our second uh, headed goal of the game. Uh, Wrexham's first. And we are tied one apiece. And just before half time, Gerald Kwanza again getting his body involved. Good to see Kwanza. Um, fitting in into the team straight away and uh, well right on cue actually Kwanzaa makes a mistake gives the ball away to Alcaraz but Fodderingham bails Kwanzaa out there still uh, plenty to learn the 23 year old as we have a corner now on the hour mark looking to score our second corner of the season already Divine into Mullen Mullen gets there once again keeper comes doesn't collect the first time but he does eventually save Southampton let off there as Will Smallbone replaces Alex Lowry and comes on to face his former side. We drop to a, we we stick with the four through three formation, but we drop the cam into a deeper role playing with two, one uh, one holding and two regular centre mids. Alfie Divine and now Will Smallbone and Alfie Divine would grab the go ahead goal. He had a fantastic chance to uh, score the winner against Blackburn in match day one. He missed it. This time he takes his chance on his left foot once again. It's a great finish from Divine, and this time he could have the game winner. Well, uh, with 15 minutes to go, we would grab the third. An own goal from Payne, you know, living up to his name. Marlin with the header, and it uh, it's saved by the keeper, but it's an absolute mess up between Payne and the shot stopper, and it ends up in the back of the net. Great save from the keeper here with his leg. Uh, to keep the scores um, to keep the score at three one with just a couple minutes to go, Southampton looking now to break down the other end. Uh, Sulemana plays it into Alcaraz, great save. Wes Fodderingham, Wes, uh, you know him potentially hearing the criticism from us, saying that we might replace him, and he's uh, stepping up today. Some great saves as he helps us see out a victory on the south coast. Uh, Jacob Mendy goes for the long shot. It just about doesn't have the legs. Lumley collects, but that will be full time. So 
After a uh, disappointing draw on home soil, you know, conceding three and drawing three all with Blackburn, we come to St Mary's, who are probably one of the favourites to go up this season and secure all three points. A great response after going a goal down as well. Yuri Regia picking up his first assist of the season. Great to see him on the score sheet. Alfie Devine bouncing back after that after that bad miss uh, in injury time against Blackburn, grabbing a goal on his weaker foot. Devine, I think, is just going to be one of our key players for the long term. And we pick up four points from the opening two games. Great to uh, great to see as we reject a bid here from Turkey coming in. Galatasaray coming in for Paul Mullen. No, sir, he is not going anywhere. Mullen is untouchable. I'm, I'm not having it. He is going nowhere. But then an interesting offer, a French league, uh, a second league side, Dun Dunkirk Q, come in for Matthew Miller, our American um, winger who... He's been out on loan for a couple of years. I, I just don't see him getting into the squad and I was happy to move him on. Um, I think he'll probably want to stay in Europe. I haven't moved here originally to to join Wrexham. Um, he'll be going, he'll drop him down in level. So hopefully he'll be able to find some game time. But yeah, we agree on a £860,000 deal, which is 85000 higher than his valuation. So he'll be on his way to France. We reject a second bid for Mullin from Granada. And then um, a more realistic bid here, Ismail Koulibaly, Wanted by Luton, who had just been relegated this season into the championship, but we reject that bid. Koulibaly is our main man in midfield. He's our main holding midfielder now, so he won't be going anywhere. Well, into the third game of the episode, and it is cup action for the first time this season. MK Dons um, visiting the racecourse grounds. First round of the, uh, of the Carabao Cup. Dons 19th in League One right now. Uh, one win, one uh, sorry, one draw, one defeat in their opening two games. Sat in 19th in the very early stages. Uh, 11 changes uh, to the side that beat Southampton. You, of course, know that we rotate massively when the cup games come around. Um, first starts in a Wrexham shirt for Will Smallbone and Cooley Woodrow. Um, he's partnered up top with Tom Williams as we change to a 4 3 1 2. Aaron Hayden captain in the side today. Youth Academy prospects Elliot Cox and Lloyd Humphreys on the bench for this one. Well, the visitors would grab a 1 0 lead. Uh, captain Gilby. Um, a firing, not a powerful shot at all, and it beats Nathan Lloyd at the near post. Was very disappointed that one went in. And then we would get to the halftime break with MK Dons on top, forcing uh, Nathan Lloyd into multiple saves. At the halftime break, we would uh, rotate back to a 4-3-3. Elliot Cox and Rocco Vata coming on on either wing, and those two would link up with 20 minutes to go. Guest finding Cox with a great ball over the top, and then Cox with a beautiful whipped uh, cross in Vata again scoring a fantastic goal this guy I t I'm telling you he doesn't score tap-ins he always scores great goals chest and volley and we're tied one apiece here and as we tick into injury time here um, Mullin actually he uh, charged down the keeper stopped the clearance and I thought the ref might have given us the chance to um, get a shot off but he blows for full time and we head straight to a penalty shootout so chance for Nathan Lloyd to be the hero in between the sticks. Not ideal that we've uh, been taken to a penalty shootout against a lower opposition. Yes, the team was heavily rotated, but I still expect us to get the job done in these games. Um, Cooley Woodrow, wasn't. I didn't see anything from him at all as we uh, kick off the penalties. Uh, James Milner firing the first one in and then Nathan Lloyd was saving the first Don's penalty. Love that. Paul Mullen up next and he goes the same way as Milner and scores. Dean gets MK Dons on the board with a crucial penalty. Elliot Lee makes it 3-for-3 three three for Wrexham before Nathan Lloyd makes another save and new boy Will Smallbone has the chance to send us through to the next round. Can he convert and become an instant hero? Oh, wow, no, actually. <laughs> the Dons keeper makes a fantastic save, but it is still advantage Wrexham. Kemp now lining up for MK Dons. He has to score if he wants his team to stay in this one. And he does. Nathan Lloyd sent the wrong way. And we get the chance again to score uh, the crucial penalty. Is Elliot Cox involved as he came on? I've been impressed with Elliot Cox the uh, few times I have seen him. He's been fantastic. Very, a live wire. And he looks like a great player down the, le uh, down the left or the right. He scores the winning goal here in the shootout. Sends us through to the next round. Uh, <laughs> crazy scenes considering we're through one round. And is that fan invasions? Who's that with a bucket hat? <laughs> is that a little fan invasion i don't know what was going on there 
probably not worth a, a, a pitch invasion, you know, winning the first round game against lower opposition on a penalty shootout. But we'll take it through to the next round now. And, uh, you know, we'll always rotate in the cup games unless we get deep into the competition because the league for us is number one priority. Tom Williams comes to us. He he wanted game time in that match. He did play, but again, I just didn't notice him. And I might actually look to sell on Williams. I, I haven't really been with, impressed with him for, for a little while now. As Matthew Miller has his move confirmed. And we look at the league table just before our fourth game. And it is Sunderland uh, at home. Who are in perfect form. Two out of two wins in the league. One win in the cup as well. And they are yet to concede a goal. Scary stuff from the Black Hats who look to uh, get back to the Premier League after over a decade out of the top flight. Well, we're back to our recognised 11 after everyone was uh, rested during the cup game. Jewis and Bennett facing his former side yet again. Well, just five minutes in, Alex Aria would um, have the first chance of the game, forcing a save from Bishop in net as he looks to secure three clean sheets in a row in the league. And then 16 minutes on the clock, former Black Hat Bennett gives the ball away and Sunderland would get to work. Embleton dancing his way round the defence and he drives it past Fodderingham. Is it is that Fodderingham's fault again? I mean, he's diving the wrong way. I don't even know what he's doing there, beating at the near post. I think, I feel like you're always told, like, keepers should not be beaten at the near post. Maybe, you know, maybe we're wrong, but... Yeah, it just felt like a disappointing one to concede again. And Mullen forces Bishop into a fantastic save. A uh, good chance there for Paul Mullen to get his third in three games. But uh, the keeper comes up with a great save. And then Bishop once again. Yuri Regier looking for his first goal in a Wrexham shirt. Great header after a fantastic cross from Divine. And Bishop, look at that reach and the reaction from the shot stopper. No wonder he hasn't conceded a goal in any competition yet. He has been phenomenal in these early stages for the Black Cats. Well, Josh Earl would win the ball, but then give it away before uh, Fodderingham. It's his, chart, his, his, it's his turn to uh, be the hero, and he gets a good, a strong left hand down to the ball. And just a few minutes before half time, let's not concede now, boys. You know, let's go into the break at least just one nil down. But Jack Clark has other things on his mind. The former Leeds and Tottenham winger. Finding his feet at Sunderland and uh, I think he scored against us last season as well. He grabs the second goal and for a team that hasn't conceded any goals this season to score two against them is going to be tough. Well, the second half was a quiet one. Fodderingham was forced into a great save before Paul Mullen find Vata driving into the box. And Rocco Wood, uh, Wood scored the first goal against Sunderland this season. A fantastic effort. I told you, this guy scores great goals constantly. That is his third in all competitions already this season. Great to see him having a flying start. But unfortunately, it wouldn't be enough as uh, Sunderland went down the other end, foddering and forced into a good save. But with the ball going out for a corner and we were into added time in extra time already. Smallbone concedes the free kick, but the referee blows for full time. A tough one, you know, we came up against a very, very strong outfit in Sunderland. And yes, we dominated some some spells of the possession and we created plenty of goal-scoring opportunities. Bishop in goal was phenomenal. Um, you know, kind of feeling jealous that they've got such a good goalkeeper. And I would be very surprised if Sunderland aren't at towards the top end of the table come the end of the season. I know we're in the early stages yet, but... They look like a very good outfit. As we see the table after three games, of many teams without a win so far and a bunch of teams, the top seven unbeaten, Leeds, Sunderland, 100% record. Sunderland, Watford and Leicester have all only conceded just one goal. So if we're going to push for promotion this season, there is going to be some tough competition. There are some top, top teams in there this season, but I do believe we can do it. I believe, you know, we need to still make a couple of improvements, maybe another centre-back, potentially a goalkeeper, and then I think the team will be looking very, very strong indeed. But that'll be it for today's episode, episode 57. We've kicked off season four in charge of Wrexham. Make sure to drop a like on the video if you're enjoying the series. Sub to the channel if you haven't already. And make sure to get those transfer suggestions in. I'll always make a note of them. Even if we don't look at those players this window, I'll keep an eye on them in the coming windows. That is for sure. But yeah, sub to the channel if you haven't already, guys. And I'll catch you in episode 58 very soon.